national title game and the defending champions are playing like it, at least to the second period. Lake Superior State is enforcing their will on Maine four to two. We saw it early on, Bob, play along the boards the way Lake State likes it. Wide open first period. I'll tell you, Lake Superior laid a whooping on them in the second period and just took the starch right out of the legs. You know, I've never seen as tired a Maine team as I saw late in that second period. And you could just see another goal coming, and it did come. Gave them a two-goal margin heading into the break. Now, they're tired, Maine is, but they do get the break here. They'll be fresh for the first few minutes of the third period, and I would think the early part of the third without trying to get too panicky. Very important for Maine. Well, this is a great hockey team with great offensive performance and tremendous character. They will whoop that period. They're down, but they're not out. This is a superb offensive team. They've got to open up the ice in the second period. Lake Superior is the best defensive team in the country. For those folks watching in Maine, you recall just a couple of days ago, Michigan held a 3-2 to lead after two periods, and Maine came from behind to beat them in overtime. Times old is not lost, but I was so impressed with the Lakers the way they played their game to perfection the second period. Yeah, Michigan laid off a little bit in the third period. I don't think Lake Superior will do that. Uh, I didn't see Maine as tired at the end of the period against Michigan as I saw them here. They're going to have to recoup big time between periods. Okay, three unanswered goals in the second period has given Lake Superior State a 4-2 to two lead. When we come back, we're going to talk to the chairman of the Men's Ice Hockey Committee, Lang Kennedy of Cornell. We'll be back with that in a moment. In just over a half hour, your family will disappear out the door. What do you fix for dinner? Well, if you're ready to go when I am. It's quick. It's easy. Oh, I invited Bobby over. It's beef. Hey, Bobby, pull up a chair. It's what's for dinner. Too many businesses today leave their customers up in the air. But Allstate is different. Your Allstate agent's job is to keep you secure for years to come. To stick by you so that you stay with Allstate for your car insurance and home insurance. For years. For life. You're in good hands with Allstate. I thought going away to college meant I didn't have to answer to anybody anymore. I could stay out all night, tailgate before a game, go to a bar after. One Saturday, we even took our victory celebration on the road. I drove straight into a drunk driving conviction, which means that when I get to this question about ever being convicted of a crime, I have to answer yes. My dream was to have the whistle in the long pants. Hey, that's it. I wanted to coach basketball. Cancer can take away all my physical ability. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart. And it cannot touch my soul. To join Jim Valvano in the fight against cancer, call 1-800-872-8300. With each donation of $25, you'll receive a Jimmy V Team t-shirt. Don't give up, Jimmy V. Don't ever give up. Back at a sold out. Bradley Center, Milwaukee, hockey's national title game. Lake Superior State, superior in that second period with three goals. They lead the Maine Black Bears, the number one team in the nation, by a score of four to two. I'm Tom Meese, joined by Lang Kennedy, athletic director at Cornell, but more importantly here tonight, chair of the uh, men's ice hockey committee. Your last formal night as chair. You're finishing up your turn. Congratulations. You come into the big building, just sell them out. Oh, this is a great, uh, great event. It's a great uh, intercollegiate athletic event, and it's sort of the, the dream of our committee, you know, and, I, and I've watched it over the past six years to to come to this kind of a major athletic event where you have a sold-out situation in a major athletic uh, building with a team from Maine and a team from Lake Superior is seeing a, a great hockey game. This is a tremendous hockey game. Now, Lang, it used to be that these championships were held in small on-campus arenas because the you know everybody figured, well, there's not that many people interested. Interested? You set attendance records here this week over 18,000, three nights in a row. That, that's correct, and uh, I, I've seen so many changes over the past six years. Uh, working with the committee in the last three years, uh, chairing the committee, and and to see the regional concept catching on and, and having a solo situation in Worcester uh, last week and last year in Albany where we had four Western teams coming into Albany and virtually a solo situation and then coming back here to Milwaukee 
it, it's just a, a tremendous uh, national championship. Now, tickets for this championship game have been sold out for almost a year, 11 months to be exact. Next year, we go back to the St. Paul area, the Civic Center, where they do a wonderful job. And uh, if you're looking for tickets, that's the address, University of Minnesota Ticket Office. They're going to be hard to get, aren't they, those They're going to be really hard to get because uh, around the hotel today and, uh, and walking around the streets, it's just a gorgeous day here in Milwaukee. And it was a hard ticket to get. And, and uh, talking to, uh, having our committee meeting this afternoon and just talking about the uh, championship and the wonderful job that the Milwaukee organizing group have done here, Hockey Wisconsin, the University of Wisconsin, all working together, and the, the officials, this, this is, uh, and I'm, I'm looking out here and seeing 18,000 people. It's truly a, a, a final night of our college hockey season, and it couldn't be better. We're going to take a look here graphically at some future sites for this championship. Next year, St. Paul, but back east in 95, and you can see in Cincinnati in 96, and I know that we'll sell out those buildings as well, right? I think so, and we met with all the uh, future hosts yesterday and, and making plans, and, and our, uh, our guidance to them is to start selling now, and, and their marketing people are all here this weekend taking a look at uh, how it can be done and how it should be done and getting guidance and direction. And, and, uh, and what, what is happening, Tom, is that th this tournament is creating a national following. And there are college hockey fans that are now ordering tickets and coming to these games and following the championship regardless of what team is in. That's evidence tonight in the appearance of the Wisconsin fans. Lang Kennedy, thank you so much for the work you've done over the years. You have a lot to be proud of. Thanks for being with us, and uh, we'll see you along the road. Sure will, Tom. Thank oh. you so much. Okay, our score after two periods here for the Bradley Center, Milwaukee. Lake Superior State leads Maine by a score of 4-2. to two. We'll be back in a moment. Noble warrior advised, the art of protection springs from within. One must stay vigilant against one's unfragrant perspiration, lest one provoke a hostile response. Thus, a Norris ritual is right guard sports day. An aromatic array of the freshest scents and maximum protection against disarming wetness. Confirming the wisdom, the best defense <laughs> is not to offend. Right guard sports day. Anything less would be uncivilized. Final question, ladies. How would you save the planet? Tax credits for education. Aggressive environmental legislation. Which planet? Why do pageants still great on a curve? Queen of the entire planet. <laughs> Try a less filling beer with a lot more taste. But dry. With a beer this different. What a surprise. It's no contest. Now, wait a minute. Polaroid introduces new party film. You know you make me want to shoot. Grab Polaroid and shoot. Throw your hands up. Shoot. Let's share a smile now. Shoot. We're all together now. Shoot. The party's jumping now. Shoot. Grab Polaroid and shoot. Nothing picks up a party like new Polaroid party film with colorful borders that develop right along with the pictures. So grab some party film, man. Grab Polaroid and shoot. Grab Polaroid and shoot. You know you make me want to shoot. Construction. Munch time already. That's why my stomach is talking to me. I smell fries. I'm out, y'all. Wait, wait, James, bring me back a Big Mac extra value meal. Make that too. I'm popping for Kiki. I can't exploit your manhood like that, my brother. <laughs> and McDonald's prices exploit me. Go ahead, Chuck. I got it. Allow me. Could have been the Mickey D's and back by now, y'all. To make the most of your money, get a whole lot of the food you love in a McDonald's extra value meal. My treat. Gonna... Lunch money. What you want is what you, what you get at McDonald's today. The ice has been resurfaced, and in a moment, Lake Superior State and Maine will skate on the ice for the third period of tonight's game. That Lake State leads by a score of four to two. It was uh, two to one going into the second period in favor of Maine, but all Lake State in that second stanza. I'll tell you, Clayton Beddoes had a big second period, and he had a lot to do with turning the tempo of this game around. He gets his 18th goal to tie the game up 2-2. Two to two. It was on a power play, his third power play goal of the season. Clayton Beddoes, number 14, just kicks that puck loose as Maine, almost clears it, comes to the top of the circle, fires one just inside the pole, beats Mike Dunham, that tied it up 2-2. Two to two. And the next time it was on a power play for Lake Superior State. He makes a great play here, Beddles does. He knocks it off the shelf and kicks it right here to Henry. It would have been hand pass otherwise. Henry stays with it, then flips the backhander in, and Dunham's beaten just to the inside. I think it deflected off his gloves. But what a play by Beddles. Had it been a hand pass, it would have been blown dead. Wayne Strong, great effort from Hewlett. Watch Hewlett work the corner. Work and work and work. It's a two-on-two -two situation, but he works it away from Lockachore in front to Strong. Strong all alone in front of the net, his 20th. 
Well, I tell you, the best thing that happened to me in that second period was that it ended, and they get a chance to get their legs back, get their heads back in the game. Still a lot of hockey to be played, everyone. The two best teams have it at it. Lake Superior stayed on top by two. Back from the third period in a moment. It's all live tomorrow night on ESPN. ESPN's presentation of the NCAA Division I Hockey Championship is brought to you by Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. On the shores of Lake Michigan, the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, ready for the third period of hockey's national title game. Maine and Lake Superior State, and a change in the nets for the Maine Black Bears. Ross Snow at Mount St. Charles High School in Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Rentham, Massachusetts, 2.12 goals against average, a .913 save percentage. In the Hockey East semifinal game, Lowell was ahead of Maine, 4-1. to Dunham in the nets. Sean Walsh yanked Dunham, put Snow in, and they came back to win. There's a look at the stats for the second period. You can see the main stat. Three goals to none in favor of Lake State. And it's a 4-2 hockey game. I, I don't think it's being guilty of overstating that the next goal is a big one either way for Maine. Uh, I just don't think that Maine's going to come back to the three-goal deficit against the team that plays the way Lake Superior does. Two goals is going to be tough enough. Patrice Tardy picks up a loose puck but can't control it. He is taken out of the ice, loses his stick. And is shaken up, no penalty call, but play is stopped to check on Patrice Tardif behind the Lake Superior net. A uh, good question would be how a tripping call isn't made here, but uh, let's watch it here. Tardif going to the net, that's a hold on the left arm. Oh, he just gets his yeah, that's not knee. Tripping. No, it wasn't a trip. Might have been a hold with the left arm, but he just got his knee in a bad spot. Went down in an awkward fashion. Yeah, watch, right here. Tries to make a turn. Oh. Boy, that's getting himself in a bad spot. That's tough to look at. Tough to look at. Well, the trainer out. We're not going to speculate on where or how severe the injury is. We only know that Patrice Tardif is in some pain, and the trainer has to come out and look at him. Out of St. Methode, Quebec, he had a big year this year with 22 goals, 25 assists, 47 points. Came here highly regarded as a freshman. A little slow starting his college hockey career, but he had a superb year this season. These guys played earlier, as we said, in the, the tournament earlier in the season out in Los Angeles at the Forum, and Maine won a 3-2 game, but it was a tough one. Well, uh, Lake Superior State gunning for their third national championship tonight. Their first one came in 1988 at Lake Placid. coach and Frank Angelone and, and watching that uh, culminate because he had put a lot of years into building that program and, and watching it uh, culminate into a national champion was a real treat. Well, that was the first national title for Lake Superior State as Patrice Tardif 
unfortunately, is back on his feet and makes his way back to the main bench. Will uh, be interesting to see if he stays there, and if he does, uh, if he comes back on the ice anytime soon. Yeah, he would be a big loss for them in this third period because he's a strong forward, and he makes the individual one-on-one -on -one move to the net as well as anybody on the team. He makes a strong drive move to the net, and they need some of that. Two goals down. Tardif got the first goal of the night, 28 seconds in. Latendris controls. He shoots. It's just wide of the stick sign of Blaine Locker. Peter Ferraro was almost there for a rebound, so the Maine Black Bears putting on some pressure here early in the third period. As I say, that Lake State comes out into the main zone. It's Hewlett. Hewlett trying to get around Latendris. With that long reach, he centers in front, but nobody home, and Fenton back the other way. This is Matt Martin for Maine. See that ten times fast. Martin on the backhand behind the net. Ferraro tries to center it pass, and Locker is there to cut it off at the pass. One of the strengths of Garth Snow in the nets against a team like Lake Superior. He's one of the best in the country at handling the puck and moving it up ice. So pucks that are dumped into the zone, Snow's going to be very aggressive to go out and get them. He plays like a third defenseman. He'll go out and get it, and he'll move it up ice, making it more difficult for Lake Superior to put that forechecking pressure on. Maine cannot spend very much time this period backed up in their own end. Face off to the right of Blaine Locker. Montgomery and Ralston sent to take it. Just under a minute gone here in the third period. Four to two, Lake Superior State gunning for their second straight national title. School of just over 3,200 enrollment on the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, where on the eastern portion of the Upper, upper Peninsula, or the UP as they call it, they had some more snow today. Carrillo with a shot, and it's uh, just part of the glove of Locker and goes high over the net. Paul Carrillo unleashed a rocket. Rolston has it for Lake Superior, out to center ice. This is Dean Tolaire. Snow comes out of his net to play it. Garth Snow replacing Mike Dunham in net to start the third period for Maine. Korea has it at center. Montgomery, his shot is blocked off by the defense, Michael Smith. Well, they clog up everything. They sure clog do. up on the boards. They play the slot area well. And here comes Rolston on his left wing, looking to pass. As it's still on his stick, and a nice play by Cal Ingraham to knock it away. Korea is uh, cherry picking at the blue line. Himes back to Montgomery. His centering pass is knocked off. And a whistle, and we're going to have a face off. 18 10 left to go here in the third period. We'll face it off with Lake State leading, last score of 4 to 2. Well, Black is back as Rusty Wallace is on the pole for the Food City 500. Rusty qualifying at over 120 miles an hour, and Dale Earnhardt, the series point leader, continues his drive for his sixth Winston Cup championship. Live from Bristol, Tennessee, that's the Food City 500, 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific time. Keep your eye on that. That's Ingram. on Sunday. That's on Sunday. Me, Tomorrow. Yeah. Keep your eye on that Ingraham Montgomery career line. When Sean gets, Sean Wallace gets himself down, He's going to double shift those guys a bunch. Here's a drive from the point, and it never got to Locker. The drive was taken by Maine's number 24, Lee Saunders, who's the hero in overtime against Michigan. He's blocked by the Lake State defense. Garth Snow sends it back up the other way. Now the puck in behind the main net again. Back forward is Jason Weinrich. Ian Ferraro in there for Maine. Malasevic. Henry in there for Lake State. They keep it there all night. Mm. They don't care. Oh, yeah. They don't need more to win. Fans are getting a little bit restless. They'd like to see the puck played, and so the officials. Oh, no. and finally comes out onto the stick of Lee Saunders. Puck all the way down the ice. Icing will be the call as it crosses the goal line. That's a perfect example of what they do so well. They keep the puck up against the wood. It has to be about 12 to 15 seconds. When it finally forces loose, they have the forecheck set up so they force the play over on the right boards and make Saunders dish the puck down the end for icing. So what do you end up with the benefit? You had a face-off down in your own end to the left of your goaltender, and they've killed about 20 seconds, 25 seconds off the clock, and they've got a 4-2 lead. Pretty smart hockey. Very effective indeed. Well, Patrice Tardif is back out there. He takes the face off with Straw. It's good to see Tardif back out there. He went down rather awkwardly on his knee. But he's back into the fray. Again, the scrum for possession to the left of the main netminder, Garth Snow. Lake State loves this. They did this against BU the whole game on Thursday night. Main fans want to delay a game penalty. At some point in time, you have to determine who is delaying the play here. Garth Snow bangs his stick on the ice angrily. He thought a penalty should have been called. 
But the referee is right there, and he'll make the call. Thank you. Finally, the puck is loose. Trying to hit Korea on the fly. A lot of those main passes haven't been connecting in the second and third period like they did early. Centering pass again. Not making connection. And back with it is Hewlett. And Strawn on the left wing. Strawn has a goal tonight. Himes is on his back. His centering pass goes off the stick. Snow wasn't quite ready for the rebound. And front guard Snow gets a pad on it. Oh, my goodness. Kurt Miller had two chances. He just lays around that net like a vulture waiting to snap up a loose puck and put it in there for Lake State. Face off as the puck goes into the penalty box area with 16-17 left to go in the third period. A sellout crowd of over 18,000 records all week. Three game total of 52,553 for the three sessions this week. And the attendance tonight, 17,704. So not quite 18,000, but a record attendance nonetheless. Right off the bat, Snow was into the fray as he's got to make a save here. Behind the goal line comes Strawn. He's had a strong game for Lake Superior. When Kurt Miller picks up the loose puck, gets one shot, and then gets another one. Here come the main Black Bears trailing 4-2. to two. Fenton can't control the left wing. It's poke checked off his stick. And Dan Angelelli sends it to center. Saunders back the other way, but right on the stick of Angelelli. Back to Saunders. Angelelli lost the glove, picks it up. The shot, seeing it all the way, it was Locker. The shot by Fenton, an easy save. 15-51 left in regulation time. Lake Superior State 4, Maine 2. Hockey's national title game continues in a moment. People that first come to Subway are a little surprised we don't have sandwiches ready, just fresh bread. That's so you can see your sandwich being made and tell me if you like onions, tomatoes, or even hot peppers. I'm not a mind reader, and there's lots to choose from. If your sandwich looks as good as it tastes, that's because Subway has a training center where experts like Mr. Pilchin teaches the art of making beautiful sandwiches. He calls himself an art teacher. I guess that makes me a sandwich artist. Esca Sandwich Artist make you a six-inch tuna sub. Just $1.89 for a limited time at Subway. Welcome back to the Bradley Center. Maine started off the scoring. Cardiff is 23rd at 28 seconds. Ferraro is 25th at 7.10. Two to nothing to score, but Backus is 8th at 17.02. Made it two to one. That's the way the first period ended. Beto started off the second at 7.01 unassisted. Then it was three to two Lake Superior. Henry from Beto's at 15th at 15.46. Four to two. Strawn is 20th at 18.42, and that's where we are. 15.51 remaining in the third period. And the faceoff, it'll be Ralston and Montgomery to the left of Lane Locker in the nets for Lake State. Lake Superior Smith finding for it, along with Korea. Korea winning the Hobie Baker Trophy. It's centering pass to score! The Black Bears are back in this one. Korea with excellent sight. And a centering pass for a score. They never give up. They keep coming at you. They're being beaten up along the boards. But Paul Korea, tremendous individual effort as he works the puck away along the boards. Then dishes it off to Cal Ingraham on the left side. Uh, Jimmy Montgomery, rather, watches his play, works his way away from Aldridge. Montgomery to the left of the net, and Paul Correa, just a tremendous individual play. Watch him work away from Aldridge, work away from Aldridge, turn his back over to Montgomery. Montgomery pounds it away for the goal. Montgomery with Rolston on him, and for the main captain, that is career point number 299. So Montgomery from Korea, and it's a 4-3 hockey game with 15.30 left to go in regulation time, and a face-off after the icing. Time of the goal, 4 minutes and 19 seconds. Montgomery is 30th goal of the season. I'll tell you, they needed something badly, Tom, to put the lift back of the legs. You know, the lift, nothing like a goal to get the lift to the legs, to get a little more enthusiasm in the legs. They were a beaten whip team for a while until that goal was scored. Now we'll see where the momentum goes. 15-31 goal differential. Are they going to be able to come back and turn the momentum in this period around? Well, the big crowd on hand from the great state of Maine, along with the great Upper Peninsula crowd from Lake State, urging their teams on. And a large uh, contingent, Wisconsin Badger fans just enjoying some great college hockey, and they have really supported this championship. We're at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, everyone. College hockey championship game. Tom Meese and Bob Norton. Montgomery with a shot for Maine. Maine, the number one team in the nation, trailing defending champion Lake Superior State 4-3. to three. We have 15 minutes to go in the third period, unless we're tied, and then we'll go overtime. 
Stay with us here on ESPN. It's been an exciting evening of great hockey action. Peter Ferraro leaves it for Cal Ingraham. Ingraham centering pass for Murphy, who maybe wasn't expecting it. Half the outfit that was out there then needed to make a line change. Here is Kurt Miller whipping a shot in on Garth Snow. Main made a goaltending change to begin the third period. Dunham is out. Garth Snow is in. Ferraro centering pass. Picked up in front. Oh, just over the stick. Uh, Chris Ferraro. Peter and Chris, the twins, trying to combine on a goal there. Didn't do it. Lee Saunders sends it back in the late state zone. You can see right off the bat how aggressive Snow is playing the puck, though. He's all over the back of the goal line there, moving the puck and trying to get the thing headed up ice and get Maine in the flow of the offense. 14 minutes, 12 seconds and counting. Lake State leading by a goal. Garth Snow coming out of the net to play it. Whips around the board along the shelf there, which is bigger than what you usually see in the college hockey rink. This is the home of the International League, Milwaukee Admirals, the beautiful Bradley Center, built for hockey. Maine's gone to three lines and shortened the bench so that uh, they're, they're not playing a fourth line, playing three, third period, is going to try to get as much offense as they can get. Michael Smith behind his own net for the Lakers. Punk comes out of the zone to center, and Maine dumps it back in. Black Bears trying to regain some territorial advantage. They had most of the first period. Second period completely dominated by Lake Superior. Into the corner and down. Looking like he was shaken up. In front, the shot taken by Silverman is well wide. Eric Trenton looked like he was shaken up, but he got up at that corner. Turn around a little bit. Rolston carries out. He's got Talaire on the right wing. Ryan Rolston pulls up. Looking, looking. Talaire can't control it. Rolston comes back to him. His shot is blocked off by Matt Martin. Whipped around the boards, but held in by Barnes. Barnes' shot never gets to the net. The clearing pass by Silverman hits uh, Latendris in the back. Montgomery onside. Ingraham can't get the pass. Barnes back for Lake State. Loose punk at center. Morin dumps in for Lake Superior. Loose stick in the main zone. Rolston. Carries in. Rolston with a shot blocked off by Murphy. And back we go the other way. A three on two developing for the Black Bears. Trailing by a goal. Chris Imes lost it in front. Pass just can't connect. And a couple of competitors were burying the ball to the score. Maine has tied it up. Hell in your hand. Five feet, four inches. And what a big hockey goal that was for little Cal Ingraham of Maine. Great individual effort by Korea. Korea is going to move the puck to Himes. Himes is going to dish it off. It's going to go off the side boards as Korea takes a swipe at it. There's Montgomery. Ingraham to the right of the net. Montgomery sets it in front. Ingraham tipped. Might have been tipped out in front. Let's watch it again. Might have been tipped out in front. I thought off Ingraham. Might have gone off the Lake Superior stick. Watch. See if we can see. It's hard to tell. Yeah, hard to tell. We'll have to wait for the announcement. All we know is it's in the net. And we have a 4-4 hockey game. I think it's Ingerham. We'll see. I've been wrong before. Game that moves as fast as hockey. Sometimes not even the naked eye can tell who it goes a lot of times. Good for well, we'll give you the official as soon as we get it. They haven't made the announcement yet. Main back in the zone. The Black Bears pressing the attack and a penalty call coming up on Lake Superior State. Saunders and Main still have possession. Fenton with the puck behind the Lake Superior net. And now Wilner touches up for Lake State, and Maine will be on the power play when we return. 11 minutes, 48 seconds left in regulation time. College hockey's national title game tied at four. No lines longer than your flight. No. I can't seem to find your reservation. No incomprehensible contracts. No heater stuck on high in August. No hidden charges. And no lemons. National. No problem. Well, we still don't have an official announcement of who scored that goal for the University of Maine. We want to be correct, so I'm not going to speculate. 11.48 left to go in the third period. 
Suffice it to say, tremendous comeback from Maine. And I think that Sean uh, Walsh will go three lines now the rest of this game because he's had some success coming back into this thing with three lines. Jim Montgomery giving credit for that yeah. goal. That's the 300th point of his college hockey career. Assist to Korea and Imes. We're tied at four, and Maine is on the power play. Montgomery at the point to Matt Martin, who loads up. Korea on the rebound just wide. That shot uh, just laid there a while after Martin seemed to fan on it. And a weak rebound was there for Korea to scoop up, but he couldn't knock it home. So the defending national champ, Bettles of Lake State, picks it off the stick of Montgomery. He doesn't have any help, though, in the main zone. That was a nice play by Clayton Bettles. Lake State a little bit on their heels now. Absolutely, and that's what happens when the momentum turns. Mr. Moe goes the other way. Ball Korea breaking it. Look at me, he scores! The Hobie Baker Award winner sets up his best friend, Jim Montgomery, and Maine is back in the lead. The most valuable player on this main team, no question about it. Paul Correa is deserving recipient of the Hobie Baker Award. But Jimmy Montgomery, the most valuable player on the team, no question. Third goal of the night when they really needed it. Here he is, Correa with the feed. Montgomery, bang, score. 11 minutes, 6 seconds left in regulation. 32nd goal, 301st career point. 8 minutes, 54 seconds, the time of the goal. Jim Montgomery, the senior from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. And now the Lakers have their work really cut out for them. They're only down a goal, that's true, but the momentum is all with the main Black Bears. As icing is the call, the faceoff will come back in the Lake State zone. Well, the last time that they did this, I remember before I said it, semifinals, hockey, playoffs, 4-1 to one low. Yanks Dunham puts in Snow, 7-5 Maine. Not because Dunham's playing badly, but because the switching goaltenders can give the team a lift. Snow, though, in this third period, as I expected him to do, has been very aggressive playing the puck as a third defenseman and has been... It's been difficult for Lake Superior to put pressure on. Congratulations to Jimmy Montgomery. A natural hat trick here in the third period. Pure hat trick. Natural hat for Montgomery. That goal from Korea. That is 5 4 man. Great players do great things when you most need it. All right, let's see if the Lakers, the defending champs, can come back and tie this up. Barnes dumps it into the main zone. Murphy goes back for it. Chris Himes with it. Still a lot of time left. Ten and a half a lot minutes. of time. A superb Lake Superior team. They just need to regroup. Puck around the boards behind the Lake State net. Barnes in the center ice, taken by Hewlett. Big Hewlett breaks in one on two. Miller was trailing the play, couldn't get the uh, puck. And here comes Lane Southside, gives it up to Matt Martin. But Martin had the puck behind him over his stick. First time we've seen the fourth line in a while. Fourth line getting a shift here with the lead. They didn't get many shifts when they were down. Of course, that saves the legs for the top exactly. competitor. Exactly. But Tendris at center ice for Maine. He's got Fenton with him in the zone. But Tendris is taken down rather rudely. And the play was offside. And we'll have a faceoff with it. Even 10 minutes left in the third period. Shots on goal have shifted over to Lake State. But the score has shifted over to Maine. You know, Maine had never been behind this season until going into the third period until their game against Michigan. They won that one. Now they're behind the second game in a row. And they've come from behind to take the lead in this one. But it was the way they were behind, Tom. They went off the second period. They had no legs. They were lucky to be down 4-2 to two at the end of two because they were just it was sort of like a fighter hanging on in the corner, getting whacked from pillar to post. They just hung on and got the legs back, made a goalie change, and they're back in the lead. Morin breaks into the main zone for Lake State, tries to get around the bear defense, passes to Tolaire. Sean Tolaire, he's a dangerous scoring threat. And he is taken down on the puck in the corner, and that's one instance where they will call a faceoff. Well, we have the three-point competition, the slam dunk competition from New Orleans coming your way tomorrow night, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific time. Join Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale for the long-distance shootout and the slam dunk competition. Bob, uh, any you I, no, no, no. when you were at Rutgers, no, no, no. Were, were you a slam dunk? No, no, no. You, Dick Vitale, and I never had to worry about being invited to anybody's slam dunk competition <laughs> unless they gave us a lift. <laughs> Well, you'll see it. That's tomorrow night on ESPN. Take a look at Mike Dunham, who started this game, and that he was relieved. 
We're going that's, snow. No, that's Greg Hurst. I'm sorry, Greg Hurst. number three goaltender. Uh, Dunham is at the other end of the bench, but nonetheless, Dunham, with a baseball hat on at the other end of the bench, was uh, lifted by Sean Walsh at the beginning of the game, not because of his play. There he is but because they just needed a team win. As Gar Snow covers up some milestones tonight statistically, we've already told you Montgomery's natural hat trick is past the 300-point mark for his career. He's now at 301, while uh, Korea, his last assist now gives him 100 points this year. So that man, Montgomery, over the 300-point mark, he's playing his final college game in Korea, now 100 points in his freshman year. He'll probably be playing for the Canadian Olympic team next year. I think almost certainly so. Well, you heard what he said in our little Hobie Baker thing. Yep. His dream, dream was to play in the Canadian Olympics. I like Canada's chances with players like him. I'll tell you that. Of course, he played on the junior national team with a guy named uh, Lindros a while ago. Sure Eric Lindros has raved to me about the play of Paul Correa. Here's Montgomery. He's got Ingraham on his right. Montgomery breaks into the zone. Around to the fence, gets a shot away. It's into the crowd. Jimmy Montgomery putting on a show here in the third period. Well, see, he has an idea that Lake Superior is sitting back and a little bit tired, so he saw it cracking that defense, and he took advantage of the seam in the defense. And you're going to see a great angle at it right here. Watch the defense for Lake Superior split a little bit. Little bit. They're going to have a difficulty coming in there. See a little split right there. He gets one guy coming left to right, tries to go back the other way as he catches Aldridge going the wrong way, tries to go back against the grain, come in against him, and he gets a deflected shot. His dad, talking about Olympic teams, uh, uh, Montgomery's dad was a boxer on the Canadian Olympic team. Eric Fenton pushes the face off into the Lake State corner. Morin is there, though, around the boards for the Lakers, and out they come. Trying to hit the breaking Tolaire at center ice. Tolaire racing for it. Beats Silverman to the pocket. Silverman takes him down. Matt Martin clears the zone for May, and this will be icing as soon as it crosses the goal line with 8.51 left in the third period. Tom, just to take a second, all of us with the NCAA and ESPN want to say a special hello to the chairman of the Hockey Rules Committee, Sid Watson, who's recuperating down in Naples, Florida. Sid's had a, a tough winter of illness and has gone south to uh, play a little golf and recuperate, but Phil Botafoco and uh, Kerwin Hudson and all the folks at the NCAA, Charlie Holden, all of us here want to wish you a speedy recovery, Sid. Sid, the former uh, Northeastern great Washington Redskin and Pittsburgh Steeler, outstanding hockey coach at Bowdoin College and the athletic director there. Also could play a little football, too. He was huh? a good football player. Played a number of years in the NFL with Pittsburgh and Washington. And uh, he was an outstanding hockey coach at both. The winner of the Spencer Penrose Award is the outstanding college hockey coach. Base off to the left of Maine. Netminder, Gar Snow. Lake State is being outplayed this period, but still only down by just a goal. Remember that as the puck goes over the glass into the crowd with 8.44 remaining in regulation. You're Lake State. You've, you've been beaten badly in this third period. You're still only down a goal. How do you reestablish your game along the board? Well, you, you, they've got to control the puck more. Uh, and it's very difficult right now, and you see the tired faces on both benches. It's very difficult right now, the way Snow is playing, to control the forecheck as much as they were earlier because Snow is like a kamikaze in that net this period. He came out like a man possessed. The first series in the zone, he was way out of the net clearing the puck. So with him acting as a third defenseman, they're going to have a tough time concentrating for check. Well, I'll tell you, Paul Correa and number 12, Sean Tolaire, had at it there just outside the face-off area. They got their sticks up high, and the officials coming in to calm things down before the puck is dropped. All right, the puck back in the Lake State zone. Barnes to center ice, pass over the stick of Tolaire. Barnes Snow plays it. Boy, he, he really is more active with the puck than Much Dunham was. Korea breaks into the zone from the slot. The drive over the top of the net. That was a dipper. The goaltender, Locker, had the duck. Snow comes out to play it as Brian Ralston is cruising in. Now, that's one in the first two periods that would have ended up four check because the defense was caught up ice. He just moved it. They're going to get it out of the zone, maybe. Morin keeps it in the zone with his hand, but they now do. Maine <laughs> comes back out. Korea, he's got Ingraham down the slot. Korea behind the net, taken in there hard and cleaned by Aldridge. Ingraham failing to play to Chris Hines. Hines dumps it in. Smith is there for Lake State. And now Maine keeping the pressure on. Chris Hines is locked or lost sight of it, went behind the net. Murphy, his drive is blocked off by the defense. Ingraham, he'll wind up, no, he'll take it in the slot. Trying to pass in front of Ferraro, Peter Ferraro. along the boards for possession as the time runs down. Seven and a half to go in the third period. Long shot, Snow gloves it. And 
Catching late state in a line change. Justin Condolin wheels in on right wing. The Lakers do a good job of recovering this time. And out with it comes Beddoes. Beddoes. Martin takes it away from him. Maine will be content to play that in and out game. Taking much better care of their own zone this period. Well, they're not in it as much. That's a big help. That helps, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but when they have been, they haven't spent much time. Major move of the game. No disrespect to Dunham, but Snow has made a major difference. 6.55 left in regulation time. Hockey's national title game, a tight one. Maine leads it 5-4. to four. What is a mountain man's natural environment? Let's explore. A mountain man enjoys peaceful surroundings. A place where gentle winds blow. And the beauty of nature is all about. Only here does the mountain man find true happiness. With a smooth bush beer or an easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains and find out how the true mountain man can make any environment a more natural one. Back at the Bradley Center, it's been the Jim Montgomery show in the third period. Pure hat trick, three goals in a row. We talked earlier that Paul Correa, deserving recipient of the Hobie Baker Award, but Jim Montgomery, legitimately the most valuable player on this team, an extraordinary leader who makes big plays. Who made the big play when they needed a tying goal against Michigan? Montgomery with an assist to Ingraham off the faceoff. 6.50 and counting. The Sands of Time beginning to run down on Lake State. they got to think about maybe putting, uh, taking a few chances offensively. Right, still early yet, but they, they just need to try to get the puck a little bit more. It's, uh, as you see, it's just Maine in control of the puck most of this third period, particularly since they scored the go-ahead goal. Strong with her at center ice. Soft Hewlett. Kurt Miller uh, tries to control it. Back to center it goes. Hewlett again. Play onside. Loose punt along the boards. Brad Willard. Miller intended for Strawn off his stick, and Matt Martin will carry it easily out of the zone. Hewlett tries to bother him at center, and Maine will get a line change out of it. Chris Himes back in his own zone. Across to Murphy. Climbs carry or dump. He'll dump it in the zone. They'll dump now. If they don't have a clear advantage on the rush, they're going to dump it most of the time. Matt Martin, rather not, I'm sorry, not Matt Martin, Stephen Barnes sends it toward the corner, but right back out again. Maine, outstanding offensive team, not in the same league with Lake Superior necessarily as a defensive team, can play excellent defense. Warren carries in himself the shot. Snow with a pass save. Crowd who's an odds, but Snow saw that one all the way. Maine's got to do a little bit more offensively, though, Tom. They're just feeding it out of the zone. They've got to try to make a control pass coming out of the zone, see if they can get the puck in some control in the Lake Superior end. Locker lets the puck go over the goal line. Icing will be the call. 5-11 left here in the third period of play. Major League Baseball opens across the nation and especially here on ESPN. Opening day 93, a doubleheader for you. The Dodgers and the first ever game for the Florida Marlins. The Angels, Charlie Huff on the hill for Florida, 2 Eastern time. And the Phillies in the Astrodome against the New Look Astros, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Some of you across the country will see an alternate game. All of you will see two games opening day here on ESPN. You know what I'm saying about having to control the puck a little bit more? They just, right now, they're just throwing it out. They need to try to make a breakout pass and have a little control through the middle. Puck goes into the corner to the right of the goaltender, Guy Snow, but Matt Martin is there for the Black Bears. Korea lost it to center. Five minutes even left in regulation time. 5-4, Maine on top. The winner wins the NCAA Ice Hockey Championship. Lake State did it last year, beating Wisconsin. And a hand pass. <laughs> Matt Martin <laughs> looking like a softball pitcher with that one, and... Whistle down. You can hand pass the puck out of your defensive end, and Martin alertly did that, and he's going to have a face off to his right, to the right of Snow. He looked like a softball pitcher, but just, just the right arc on that, and just over the glass into the crowd. Hey, Jeff Jackson, he had the same expression when he was up 4 to 2. He never changed it. Well, I'll tell you, you've got two of the best coaches in the country here in Sean Walsh and Jeff Jackson. Whatever has to be done in this game to give their teams a chance to win, they're going to do. Face off at the top of the circle to the right of Garth Snow. Clayton Venos has a goal in this game. He'll take it for Lake State. He tried to shoot it right off the uh, dropping of the puck and shot it high over the net. Smith at center for Lake State. Aldridge. Main right on top of every puck in their own zone. And Ferraro just bangs it out. Peter Ferraro with the shot. Long 
Baker there for the save. And some steam on that shot that Ferraro. Beddoes carries in. He's got Balasevic in the slot. Balasevic shoots and snow! Save the bacon for Maine with a glove save. Balasevic had that one ticketed for the lower glove side. Wow. Well, they wrote a song about this, just a matter of time, and you just knew Beddoes and one of these Lake Superior forwards was going to get loose. Beddoes, great back pass with one hand, sets up Balasevic, but Garth Snow, Cherry picks that with the glove. Now, this is going to happen. Just saying, there's just too much time in their own end. You've got to try to get something up the other end. Beddoes, great individual play. Talking about individual plays. Garth Snow right there. Mm. 4.20 left in regulation time. Garth Stowe, the senior out of Rentham, Mass. And Matt Martin with it for the main Black Bears. Latendris looking for Fenton, but Fenton is all tied up in the slot, so Latendris carries it to the corner. And Rolston and Fenton still wrestling to the left of the net. Fenton gets up and says, hey, wait a minute. The referees have blown the whistle. The question is, will we have coincidental penalty? Ralston should have a penalty here. He should have a penalty for holding. And when we had Fenton down, he rubbed him in the face with the glove. I should be a roughing penalty against uh, Ralston or at least a holding penalty. I don't know what they're going to call. but uh, well, Ralston's being ushered to the penalty box, yeah. but so is Fenton. Yeah, they're both going to go. And I think at this stage of the game, the referee's going to send both of them off. One goal game, late national title game. The referees do not want to be the ones who decide who wins the issue. 5-4, Maine on top. We'll return for the final minutes, maybe, in just a moment. I try to treat the people that I deal with like I would expect to be treated myself. Patience, patience, and more patience. Deliver more than you promise and hang in there till you get the job done. Century 21, rated most professional in real estate. Now at Goodyear, you can save 50% on the second tire when you buy one tire at the regular price. That's half off Goodyear premium all-season radials for cars and light trucks. Any way you look at it, you save. Only at Goodyear now. There's the situation. Maine, four minutes, three seconds away from winning their first ever national championship. A reminder, as we take a look at the competitors in the penalty box, that it is uh, coincidental minors, and we're under four minutes and counting. So times are wasting for the Lakers of Lake Superior State. Kurt Miller lofting one in behind the net. Miller goes for the clearing attempt by Snow. Strong with it now. He's got a man Smith open at the point momentarily. Hewlett. Well, he's a strong, strong forward. Hewlett. 6'6", six, six over 200 pounds. I like the way he plays. Puck at center ice. Lake State sends it back in. When does Lake Superior State Bob reach the point of taking chances offensively? Well, I think they're trying to. But, you know, Maine's pretty good with the puck right here and trying to control it, making at least the passes. That was when Maine was taking the icing calls at Lake Superior. Was just in Korea's onside. Henry is with him. Paul Korea taking his time in the corner. Henry trying to work it loose. 3 5 and counting. So they got uh, Maine to ice the puck. They're at least getting face off down the main end. Maine controlling a little better now. Behind the Lake State net, this is Smith. The Tendris is shadowing him, or like the tour shadowing him. Look at center ice, and out with it is Clayton Meadows. He's got some speed. The shot, the glove save, partly the glove save. The net comes off the mooring. Boy, Snow got, uh, looked like the side of his glove on that drive. Clayton Meadows has got excellent speed. He sure does, and I'll tell you, South by makes a very alert play here because that puck is coming down right in the middle of the slot. Watch South by. Snow's going to make the save, and he's going to put it up into no man's land. They're going to be right in front. Watch the save. Cherry pick off the glove. Puck's coming down. It was Imes, rather, not self by Imes 4, who alertly threw that puck to the corner. And a reminder, top right boxing comes your way at midnight Eastern time. That's 9 p.m. tonight on the West Coast. 10-round USBA heavyweight championship. Big Joe Hip against Kevin Ford. Let's get ready to rumble tonight at midnight on top right boxing. Don't forget... Before you go to bed tonight, after Top Rank Boxing, set your clocks ahead an hour. Daylight savings time. Debuts tomorrow. Spray ahead, fall behind. I tell you, I don't like these in-zone face-offs. Late in the game, two minutes and 45 seconds left to go. In-zone face-off to the rest, uh, to the right of Garth Snow. These are nothing but trouble. Face-off to the right of Snow. 2.45 left regulation. Lake State wins the face-off. Barnes cruising in. Looking for somebody open to the slot. Strawn is covered, so is Morin. And Maine clears the zone. 
That was a good clear. It was a flipper out of the zone that didn't result in an icing call. You like those. You're the main fan. Good hang time on that. Yep. He's up a couple more seconds. Warren with it. Thought about passing. Now does. Into the corner. But Main is there. Silverman. Again, lofting it, but this time leaving the playing surface. Face off with 218 left to go. Well, that was a flipper that flew out of the ring. Face off is going to be to the left. And again, if you're a main fan, you, you want them to get the puck out of the zone, but you would like them to make a few passes, safe passes on the breakout to control it uh, out of the zone, get it through center zone, and put it down the other end. The more face offs you take, the more opportunity you should give Lake Superior for control, the more chances they're going to have to score. Now, end zone face-offs are fraught with opportunities for breakdown. The last one, Maine covered everybody. Welcome to the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If you haven't been with us all night, we have about 2 minutes, 18 seconds left to go in regulation time. I'm Tom Mees with Bob Norton at Hockey's Championship Game. Maine leading Lake Superior 5-4. The Lakers of Lake Superior defending champs had a 4-2 lead coming into the third period, but a natural hat trick by senior captain Jim Montgomery has given Maine the lead. And Montgomery cruises in for the faceoff with Clayton Beddows of Lake State. And it's a two-on-two for a moment. But Lake State gets uh, possession, dumps it back in the main zone. 2-10 and counting. Going to watch the net now and see when or if Blaine Locker will be pulled by Jeff Jackson. Can't do it when the puck's in your zone. At least not now. We're under two minutes. Locker out at the top of his crease. Puck kept in the zone. Hewlett is pulled down. Nothing called. Montgomery and Locker forced to come out and make the save. Lake Superior got to get the puck in the main zone so they have a chance to pull the goalie. Meadows with a long shot. That won't work because Snow just sends it out again. 29 and counting. Maine has never been in a title game, let alone won a national championship. Right. Trying to turn the trick in their first appearance in the championship game. Locker still snug in his net. Now he comes out to between the face-off circles. Does the puck stay in the main zone? It does. Silverman and Locker started to go for the net. He's going. Blaine Locker's out of the net. They're just throwing it. they got to be a little careful where they throw it. The extra attacker is on. Smith throws it in. Snow is down. The rebound is loose. The rebound. In the slot. The shot. Oh, my. He missed it. Talaire missed an open net. And Maine has it. Sean Talaire had the time goal on his stick. Snow is down. And Talaire missed an open net. Under a minute to go. 47 seconds. Solaire will think about that one for a long time. And the empty netter is wide. Lake Superior State still alive. Smith to center ice. Six attackers on for the Lakers. Play is offside. Hewlett touches it. We'll have a faceoff. There goes a glove. 28.4 seconds left. And I'm telling you, Sean Solaire had that puck on his stick. It seemed like an eternity. Well, what happened there was, Tom... Maine started to panic, release the puck out of their own zone, making backhanded clearing passes out of the zone and throwing it right to the point. One of those is just going to have to be in trouble. Fred, that's from the left point. That's Smith, number five. Watch Talaire. Wait, 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 wait. He's got it down and out. Wait. Now oh, he hit the crossbar. Playing her off the crossbar. Oh, out in front. Another one on a rebound by Strawn. That one, Snow made a great save, and they finally get it out of there. Hit the Watch crossbar. It again. See, that was just a careless clear out of the zone. They're just panicking with the puck. Talia's going to get it. Watch it from this angle. Here's the shot. Hold it. Hold it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Watch this position. Look at all the net that's open. Play. Now watch Strawn. Right there, Strawn. Save. With the, with the skate by Snow. Oh, my. Talia hits the crossbar, and Strawn can't get good one. Let's listen. Well, let's look at it and see. Watch it. Doink. Ding. Wow. Wow. Well, baseball tonight is set to follow us here. Our championship game coming down to conclusion. Chris Myers and Ray Knight standing by with scores and highlights and news about the Braves pitching staff. Peter Gammons handing out some awards before the season even starts. How about that? Baseball tonight, the most comprehensive look of Major League Baseball on television. That's coming up right after our championship game. Unless... Well, it's going to come up. The game will end in 28 seconds unless Lake Superior State ties it and sends it into OT. Well, if such things are national championships made, fractions of inches. But, you know, when you haven't won a national championship, these are young kids. You lose sight of that. And they get to the last minute of the game, and when they have control of the puck, all they're thinking of, I don't want the turnover to be mine. Let me get it out of here. And they just pass it out in bad positions. Before they drop the puck, 
kudos to both Jeff Jackson and the oh, Lakers yeah. and Sean Walsh and Absolutely. the Black Bears. These are the two best teams in the country that I've seen. They deserve to be here, win or lose. Great credit to both schools. And what a great game of tempo and momentum changes here in the last two minutes. The momentum has gone back in the late stage of this game to a Lake Superior team that looked beaten after a main team came back from looking beaten. What tremendous men momentum changes in this hockey game. All right, Montgomery and Strawn, the faceoff just outside the main zone. Now the net is empty. Blaine Locker is on the bench. Six attackers in Maine now is called a timeout. This is sort of like what basketball coaches do when they see the way the other team lines up. They want to call their own timeout to discuss their strategy. Well, I think that what he's doing here is a little bit of strategy discussion. But these guys right here, Montgomery and Martin and Murphy, have played one load of hockey tonight. And to give them an extra minute rest doesn't hurt a bit. 28.4 seconds left. With Bob Norton, I'm Tom Mees. National Championship game of college hockey. We've enjoyed it tonight from the Bradley Center. What a great facility this is. Record-setting crowds all week long. Over 52,500 have attended the three sessions. Talking about momentum, for those of you who may have just tuned in, Garth Snow came into this game in the third period with Maine down 5-2, to two, taking the place of Mike Dunham, who did not play badly for Maine in the Nets. And from that point on, looking beaten after two, Jim Montgomery is 30th at 419 from Paul Correa. Jim Montgomery is 31st at 740 from Paul Correa and Chris Hines. And Jim Montgomery is 32nd at 854 from Paul Correa. And the score 5 to 4, 28.4 uh, seconds remain, 28.4 seconds remaining in the third period, the last minute and a half of which has been all Lake Superior. Dupree sent to drop the puck just outside the main zone. And you can see the chunking for position between Strawn and Montgomery. They throw them both out. Ingraham will take it against Rolston. Baseball tonight follows our coverage, so stay tuned. Smith into the main zone and a whistle. That's a mistake by Smith. That's a serious error by I Smith. See, I see. But yeah, he never got the puck. He had an opportunity to get the puck over the red line, and he was clearly on the defensive side of the red line when he dumped that puck in. One more step, he gets it over. Faceoff could be potentially, or the puck would have potentially in the zone. Smith, second team All-American, outstanding hockey player, but this is not smart. Right, you see, he's got some room. Yep. But he dumps it in. He's at least three or four feet. Good call by the official Remember right the, there. The red line in college hockey is used to determine ice. And that wasn't even close. No. So Locker has to come back in the net. That's the net effect. It takes away a power play. Instead of six attackers, you have five, and you're, you're a long way away from the other guy's net. And five more seconds have run off the clock. 23.7 seconds left. Ingraham and Strawn take the face off. Locker will head to the net as soon as Lake State can get the puck out of the zone. Ralston tries to get it out. It's at center now, and Locker is out of his net. May have to come back in, though. No. Lake State has it at center. Ingraham corrals it. Smith pokes it away. Maine will just shoot for that open net. Seven seconds, five seconds. One more shot, maybe. Maine is going to win their first ever national championship. The baton passes. The former national champion Lakers out of Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan, Lake Superior State, consoling their goalie locker. And look at Jim Montgomery having just played his final collegiate game. What a way to go out, Bob, with a natural hat trick to win the national title. You know, from Kittery to Madawaska and Sanford to Castine, leave the houses and ring the church bells. Maine's bringing home the national championship, the first national championship in anything in the history of the University of Maine. Now, Sean Walsh, the head coach of Maine, is standing by. You see Jeff Jackson consoling his goaltender, Blaine Locker, telling him, keep your chin up. You did a heck of a job. 
He said before the week began that just getting back to the national title game would be a big, big thing. It is, but a bigger thing for Sean Walsh. Sean, you did it in your first try. Congratulations. Thanks, Tom. I didn't do it. Our players did it. They, uh, the key was to keep patience after the second period, and uh, we didn't panic. They really had a great second period. We had a great first and third period. But darn it, I'll tell you what, and I agree with Bob Norton, from Kittery to Madawaska, from Castine East and West, I want the whole state celebrating. We're coming home to Alphonse Arena at 4.30 Sunday afternoon. Hey, Sean, I thought that the move, I've seen you do it before, the move to Snow, Dunham played well. It wasn't a reflection on Dunham. But the big difference, I thought, in that third period, Garth Snow, brilliant, not just in net, but in playing that third defenseman role, clearing the puck out of the zone, prevented Lake Superior from putting the forecheck on you. Well, that's exactly what we had to do, Bob. We needed offense, and uh, Snow's the best offensive goaltender in college hockey. He's probably the most underrated goalie in college hockey, and he showed tonight why he's there. That's, the reason I wanted to start Dunham was because then I could go to Snow. I didn't want to start Snow and then have to go to Dunham because Dunham's not quite as good with a puck. Well, Sean, I got, I got to ask you. You've won your first national title. You've done a tremendous job. You're nine years at Maine, but you know the stories are going to be in the papers tomorrow. You've been rumored for a job at University of Massachusetts. Your name has been in the papers. Do you have anything to tell us now one way or the other? Hey, I want to celebrate this national championship, but I got a feeling if I'm coaching college hockey next year, you'll see me at the University of Maine going after a repeat. Okay, well, great, great job, and go celebrate with your players, Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Tom. All right, Sean Walsh, head hockey coach at the University of Maine. You know, it must be said, Bob, that there's some coaches around the country and who, who really don't get along well with Sean Walsh, but Jeff Jackson is not one of them. He, he says there's not a more class guy in college hockey, and the two of them respect each other so much. Well, coaching's like every other business. There's a lot of jealousy involved, and some of that's jealousy. The star of the night, Jim Montgomery. Jimmy, you went out with a flourish, your final college game, a natural hack. Congratulations, young man. Uh, thank you very much, Tom Mees. I mean, uh, I can't express what I'm going through right now. This is just fabulous, and... Uh, I don't care about the hat trick. I just care. We got a national championship. We did it, Arno. Yeah, State of Maine. Woo! Hey, Jimmy, in that second period, between the second and third period, I have a feeling you had a role in that locker room. What did you say to those guys in the locker room? Because you guys were a whip team at the end of that second period. They did a physical number on you. Yeah, we, well, we just thought that, uh, you know, our team had a lot of better grade-A chances, and we just kept plugging away. We were going to end up scoring on them because uh, we were getting a lot of quality chances more than we thought against such a great defensive team and uh, we just kept going away and Paul Korea sets me up with three empty nets what can I say well we're gonna we're gonna look at one of your goals now you know Korea passed the 100 point mark for the season you went over the 300 point mark for your career we're looking at you carrying the puck up ice now and uh, you have a pretty good guy number nine there Korea and you just keep cruising on the slot and you said it he set you up with an empty net well we looked at their film and uh, penalty killing they let they let me carry the puck up again that's what they did against BU so I told Paul if I could get it to him we'd attack two on one on one D and that's what we did all right, Jimmy, thank you very much for being with us. Congratulations, young man. You leave a national champion. Thank you, Tom. All right, Jim Montgomery, the natural hat trick, over 300 points for his great college career on the same line with a Hobie Baker Award winner, Paul Correa. And Paul is going to put on the headsets right now and join us. Paul, Tom Mees, and Bob Norton up here in the booth as we take a look at Lake Superior State. Disappointed in defeat, but you're not disappointed. Not a bad first year, eh? Yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> been unbelievable. You know, everything... Uh, that could have gone uh, right, uh, went right this year and topped it off in the national championship. Uh, we couldn't be happier. Paul, you had to make a big comeback at, in that third period because I've never seen you, the team, as tired as they were at the end of the second. Physically, Lake Superior was very strong. What were you thinking heading into the third? Uh, I was just thinking we wouldn't be denied. We've, uh, this is our year, and we knew it was our, th this was our year, and uh, we just kept going at him, and sooner or later, you know, we figured we'd get the breaks, and we got him in the third. You played with some great players. You played with Lindros and the junior national team, and we think you're going to be on the Canadian Olympic team next year. I know you want to play, but you can't have played with any better guy than Jim Montgomery in college. Jimmy, uh... <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't have words to describe Jimmy. He, he came up big like he did. Uh, he's led us all year long, and he's, uh, you know, in my opinion, the best player in college hockey, and he proved it tonight. You going to play for, the, for your country, for Canada next year? Are you going to leave and play Olympic? I'd, I'd love to if the opportunity came, but, uh, you know, right now I'm just going to savor the victory, and uh, we'll decide in the summer what, uh, what I'm going to do next year. All right, congratulations, Paul, on a great first year. Whether you come back to Maine or not, or whether you're going to Olympic or pro glory, we'll see you along the road. All right, thanks a lot, Tom. Okay, Paul Correa, just a great year a great freshman year winner of the hobie baker trophy 
And as you look at the Lakes uh, Superior State Lakers, a quick note about them as the main players can are celebrating. Well, they're a gallant team. Uh, that's the only way I can describe them. A gallant team. They played their hearts out. They played as well as they could play. They didn't give in to the main team at any point in time, came on. Even with the last second of the game, they were still having an attempt to score. I admire their coach so much. I admire their team so much. They play hard. They're going to be here a lot of times. On the Sioux, they can hold their heads up high because not many teams make it to two straight national title games. The final score our main five, Lake Superior State four. We'll be back with a post trip from Milwaukee in a moment. I must be the greatest. I took up the world. I took up the world. Three and five. Three and five. Three and five. Three and five. As long as they keep making history, we'll keep writing their biographies. Peter Graves hosts the landmark television series, Biography, the stories of extraordinary lives. Tuesday, only on a &E. They're here. I missed you. I don't know who the hell you are. We don't want to be a burden. We'll sleep in the car. And only here. You're much nicer than John's first wife. Didn't I tell you? You were married before and you didn't tell me? Now, how do you get them to leave before it's too late? It doesn't have to be anything fancy. A simple accident would do. Here, put this on your lap. Tom Selleck, Donna Michi. Folks, coming in April on HBO. National champions for 1993, the Black Bears of Maine, their first title ever. Winners over a gallant group from Lake Superior State, 5-4. to four. Welcome back to Milwaukee with the cheering and the celebrating still going on. I'm Tom Meese with Bob Norton. But I'll tell you, another guy has a right to celebrate a little. He should be very proud of his team. Head coach Jeff Jackson of Lake Superior State. Jeff, you told us during the week just getting back to a title game would be a great achievement. Your guys deserve a lot of credit tonight in defeat. Well, Tom, we, uh, you know, we gave it everything we had. Maine's a tremendous hockey team. Uh, you know, the momentum switched uh, two or three times in the hockey game, and I was a little bit afraid about going into the third period, especially after the way they came back on Michigan last, uh, last Thursday. So, hey, they're a tremendous team. They deserve their credit. Uh, our guys played their hearts out. I'm very proud of all of them. Coach, uh, the best word I can use to describe your team is gallant, and that's the way they played all game long. How much of a difference did Snow make in the third period handling the puck in his defensive end? Well, he made a difference. He made a couple of real key saves, too. We thought the one puck went in. I guess it didn't, but, uh, you know, uh, our guys just tried to keep going. I mean, they, uh, the, that one line, Montgomery's line, he was lit up, and that whole line just did a tremendous job uh, uh, in, the latter, in the early stages of the third period. It really changed the momentum of the whole hockey game. You, you talk about momentum. You guys had Maine physically whipped after that second period, Jeff. The best thing that happened to them was the period ending. They could catch their breath. It looked, well, frankly, I thought it was a lock coming into the third period. I know coaches never think that way. Were you surprised the way things turned around in the third? Well, I was concerned. I mean, you never can, you never can think it's going to be easy against a team like the University of Maine. I mean, they're, they've got such tremendous team speed that you can never assume that things are going to be easy. I mean, uh, you know, maybe if you're in a league game or something like that and you've got control of the player, you're at home, it makes it a little bit easier. But in these, in these conditions, you know, the... Uh, uh, the building's a little warm, and, uh, you know, Sean had last change with lines, and uh, he changed the line changes, and uh, he caught the right breaks. I mean, he got the guys out there he wanted versus the right guys, and uh, up to that point in the, in the game, I pretty much had, uh, had the people out there I wanted. Well, Jeff, you're a class act, so is your team. We'll look forward to seeing you again next year. Uh, hopefully so, Tom. Thank you. All right. Jeff Jackson, head coach of Lake Superior State. A quick run through the scoring summary. Nine goals tonight, and old momentum was switching back and forth. Tardif is 23rd at 28 seconds, one nothing Maine. That a few minutes later, Chris Ferraro made it 2-0 Maine from Imes and Peter Ferraro. Then Lake State started to come on. Vanka scores his 8th at 17-02 from Angelelli and Ness. That followed by Bettles. That began the second period at 7-01, a power play goal. Unassisted 2-2 the score. Then Henry, great individual effort from Bettles, made it 3-2 Lake Superior. And the second period ended with Strawn scoring from Miller. That made it 4-2. The third period begins, and Sean Wall shortens the bench, goes with three lines. Montgomery scores at 30 at the 419 from Korea. Every third shift, those guys are out there. Montgomery is 31st at 740 from Korea and Imes. They pour it on again with Montgomery. Pure hat trick is 32nd at 852 again from Korea. That's the way it ended 5 to 4. We just got the official word from the press box of the all tournament team, and it's comprised totally of players from Lake State and Maine. The forwards, Jim Montgomery and Paul Korea of Maine, along with Brian Rolston of Lake State. What a line that would be. The defenseman, Chris Imes of Maine, and Michael Smith from Lake Superior State. And your goal tender for the tournament on the first team 
Garth Snow, University of Maine. And the most valuable player, as he was in the Hockey East playoffs, Jim Montgomery. And I think that's the way it's going to end on this Maine team as well. You know, teamwork really epitomized Maine. There's Montgomery and coming in with a chance to go over 300 points in his career. Garth Snow taking his trophy tonight. But Montgomery and the friendship between he and Korea and the senior Montgomery telling everyone who would listen that the freshman Korea should win the Hobie Baker Award. No, no, never mind to me. There's a, you know, there's a lot of guys in college sports that would be jealous of a freshman coming in and taking all the headlines. Montgomery wasn't. No, he wasn't. And I had the honor of uh, doing the games this year and seeing a lot of main games. And to watch the way that Jimmy Montgomery and Paul Correa played, and not to mention the rest of those kids, it was really a pleasure to watch those two guys play this season. So the University of Maine, its 42nd win against only one defeat and two ties. They win Hockey East, they win the Hockey East Tournament, and they come here to the Bradley Center in Milwaukee and win College Hockey's National Championship. I'm Tom Mees with Bob Norton, and we'll be right back at the Bradley Center in just one moment. Introducing the Polaroid One Step with a sharp new look. I know you make me wanna grab Polaroid and shoot. Throw your hands up, shoot. Flip your head back, shoot. Come on, now. Shoot. Make sure I smile now. Shoot. We're all dancing now. Shoot. Everybody's jumping now. Shoot. Grab Polaroid and shoot. If you want to pick up the fun, pick up the newly styled Polaroid One Step camera and plenty of film because when the film runs out, so does the fun. Grab Polaroid and shoot. You know you make me wanna shoot. Mountain man survival skills. The basics. A true mountain man must have a keen sense of direction, a certain physical dexterity, and a talent for surviving the most unforgiving climates. Of course, nothing is more key to a mountain man's survival than plenty of smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains and learn how the mountain man survives even the most grueling conditions. The trophies have been handed out, and look at the University of Maine Black Bears going on their victory skate on the ice at Bradley Center here in Milwaukee to the cheers of their own fans and the fans of Wisconsin as well. They sort of adopted the Black Bears as their team. Bob, it's been a great pleasure working with you again. What are your impressions of what we've seen this weekend? Uh, great credit to college hockey. That's my impression. Lake Superior and Maine do nothing but reflect positives on the game of college hockey, and tonight we can raise the steins for dear old Maine. Okay, so Maine wins it. The next year's tournament, of course, will be at the St. Paul Civic Center in Minnesota. They do a great job up there, but they're going to have to go some to top the folks here in Milwaukee. And look at Maine. The trophy being passed around. We see it in the NHL with the Stanley Cup. But, friends, let me tell you, a lot of these guys will not have pro careers. What you're seeing now means just as much to them as it does to the professionals as the national championship trophy is raised aloft. And you know what? The great state of Maine it, right now, well, you've been to Maine several times. They're going bonkers, aren't they? First national championship in the history of the universe. University of Maine in any sport. A few years ago in St. Paul, it was the Harvard Crimson winning the hockey title, their first NCAA championship in any sport for Billy Cleary as he went out. Sean Walsh, we touched on the rumors of him leaving Maine, but he really didn't want to talk about that. Uh, he said if it's up to him, he will stay at Maine. You think he will? Well, I think he's going to stay at Maine. I, I'm not a prognosticator about that stuff either, but I can tell you right now, they're dancing in the streets all over the state of Maine. All right. For Bob Norton, I'm Tom Meese. Thanks so much for being with us. The final score from the Bradley Center Mill Milwaukee, the Maine Black Bears 5, Lake Superior State 4, all hail to Maine, college hockey's national champ. Baseball tonight with Chris Myers and Ray Knight standing by on ESPN. Good night, everyone, from Milwaukee.